Hey everybody, Mike Wolf here again to bring you another exciting tutorial in 3DS Max. Today we're going to explore the brand new feature in the 2014 version of 3DS Max called Populate. So let's set up the scenario. Say we've spent our time for a client and we've got our architectural visualization up and running, maybe you know city planning for instance here, and we need to put people in there. You know, I've already got my cars all driving around looking pretty cool but we need to add or go to that next level and add some people up until now we've had to create our own people maybe pay somebody else to do it buy them online in order to just get them in a walk cycle and walking down our street well the great people at Autodesk have apparently solved that issue for us so let's jump right in as always uh, we need to have access to our graphite modeling ribbon so if we can't see it we just need to right click somewhere in the empty space and make sure that ribbon is checked mine is here and you'll notice there's a populate tab I'm just gonna expand this to show the full ribbon and here we go we're gonna focus on two areas real quick here today one is creating idle areas and the other one is creating what they call flows those are the actual walkways that the people are gonna walk on so to get started let's do the idle area first I'm going to come into my top view, blow this up a little bit, and let's just create a idle area right here in front of my camera so we can see it uh, up close and personal. And let's jump over to the modify panel and just take a look at the settings real quick. Uh, from the top view, we can pretty much see that we have females, which are pink, males are blue, and this tells us whether or not they're standing around being in their own individualness or as a group uh, and so we can actually change this we can up and down the density so we can add more people take them away uh, we'll keep it pretty low just so the uh, the simulate times aren't too high uh, we can decide whether or not the ratio of singles to groups is high or low whichever way you want to go there whether the groups have three two or three people obviously if we have more groups it's going to show up a little bit more random than it is here and then uh, the ratio of male to female orientation is just which way they're the single people are facing and then the spread is kind of the randomness around that orientation uh, you can play around with the samples down here if you are so inclined but for us let's just go to our camera view and come up here to simulate and it's going to load the people and pop them in our scene there we go created four idlers for me so if we go over here jump to our perspective and get an up-close personal look at them uh, the meshes aren't too bad uh, they're fairly low poly but that's okay let's turn wireframe off for a second you can see the skin job that they did on these guys uh, the nice thing about this is if you're not up close and personal they do perfectly well in fact let's play my animation here right in my viewport and you can notice they're moving around some of them actually talk on like a cell phone they're talking to each other the important thing here with animation is that there's no stoppage in movement they're constantly moving everybody knows that a, a character that doesn't have movement even when they're not doing anything is pretty much a just a dead body right uh, so they're always in motion, which is great. Uh, right now, uh, this is actually simulating for the amount of time that's here on my timeline, but I can change that by coming up here to the number of frames. So if I'm just working on a particular spot in my animation, uh, we can actually increase the number that it, of frames it actually simulates. All right, so we've got the idle areas covered. Let's go back up to the top view. And let's create a flow, an actual walkway for our people. And let's just do this top one here. So go to Create Flow, and really I just click. I don't drag, I just click and let go. Click and let go, click. And a couple things I want you to notice here before I right click to deactivate is if we make this path or this flow uh, too acute of an angle, you'll notice it goes gray, and that means it's going to break. People aren't going to be walking there. Uh, so just make sure that if you're doing hard angles, uh, if you go too low an angle it will break uh, so let's just right click to deactivate there we go and a few things to take note of here uh, we already know that we have the density the male the female uh, one new thing here with the people is the direction and this really has to do with the way that they hug the corners essentially and how they take the corners uh, so you can play around with that and, and see what 
works for you. Uh, I'm going to do a couple things. I'm going to change the width of the actual flow so that it fits my walkway. Maybe about right there. And then the lane spacing. If we bring this down, take it up, obviously we can maybe fit another row of people in there. Let's just keep it to two. There is a minimum distance that you have to keep for the spacing. It won't let you go any farther. Uh, right now you can kind of see this is laying almost in the right spot, but we really need to move it. We can do it you know, all together, or we have access to flow points, which are essentially, if you imagine this as a spline, it's the vertices. So we'll grab this guy, kind of move him around. Maybe grab this guy, bring him over here, whichever way we need to go, really. Uh, and then segments, if we go to two, we can just grab these segments. So if the points were vertices, the segments are, guess what, they're segments for a spline too. All right, so now that we've got that in place, let's up the density just a little bit to get more people in our shot. And this will tell you the direction that they're actually facing and going. So these guys will be moving this way. This lane will be going that way. All right, go back to our camera, hit simulate again. There we go. And now they're standing out there in the middle of nowhere. Well, almost. If we play our animation, they're in walk cycles of their own and they do a great job and they just move along and eventually they'll take that corner. Might not take the corner by the time my animation goes out, but you can see that people are starting to come around again. Uh, so we can let that go. We can keep playing it, have fun with it. One other thing I want to show you before we're done here. Let's go to perspective and zoom up on this guy. So we know we have the low poly meshes to begin with, but we have other options. So if we come over here to display, we can just view them as stick figures, so maybe we just want to get an accounting of how many people are going to be in the scene, or maybe this is the effect we're going for. We can do custom skins, which just puts a white or gray matted material on them, and then we would have to uh, UV map them with our own bitmaps, things of that nature, if we wanted to have personalized uh, materials on them. Uh, the default one that you guys have seen so far is the crowd skin, which is just a low poly, low resolution, and the last one is high res. What happens is if you click this button, if you don't have the high res pack installed, it'll jump you to a website, you'll download the installation file, you'll install it, it's very quick and easy. Uh, it is kind of a fairly large package, but once you get it installed, you'll have, this, have access to this. So I'm going to click on this, I'm going to pause the video for just a moment here. Uh, while this loads, because this will take a while, probably about a minute or two. One second. Okay, so I took a quick render before I loaded the high res. So these are the low res uh, skins that you see right now. Kind of they're really bad lighting here, just the default studio lighting. And if I move this down, you can already see the difference in the face. Okay, you also see a lot more geometry kind of rounding out the corners. We move this down a little bit more, maybe over to the side here. You'll notice that the the bitmaps of these people are actually a lot more defined. You actually get some uh, skin and fingernail uh, detail in here, uh, as well as you know just the level of detail in the jeans itself are quite high. So high res. Definitely, if you're going to be up closer, need them to look a little bit more lifelike, you'll want to grab that package uh, from the website. Again, just click it and go to the high res skins. It'll take you to that website if you don't have it already. Uh, we can minimize this. And as you can tell, obviously the base mesh is a lot more too. There's a lot more geometry to it, so they're going to deform a little bit better. Uh, anyways. I believe that's it for the populate feature. In just a few minutes, you could have people in your scene walking around doing whatever. Uh, a couple things to mention are you can add ramps. So they can go up inclines, small inclines, not very steep inclines. Uh, and something that I wish they will add in the future, so cross your fingers, is the ability to navigate stairs. So right now they can just do walk cycles or just stand around and do nothing in the idle areas, but they can't really do stairs at all because the incline is too steep for them. So keep an eye out for that. Let's hope that that'll come up in the future. Otherwise, play around with it, have some fun, and until the next video, uh, I'm Mike Wolf again, and we will see you next time.